everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and today we're talking about a game from a series I haven't covered on this channel yet, Police Quest. You'd think I would have already played these games because I've been known to enjoy some crime fiction, mysteries, and procedurals, but... And I know I might be breaking some hearts here, I don't really like this series. I know many people have a strong connection to some of the Police Quest games, and they do have some interesting elements, so I decided to give it another shot. While consuming another shot, because this game got very tedious and I needed some alcohol. Police Quest 1, In Pursuit of the Death Angel, was developed by Sierra Online and designed by Jim Walls, a retired police officer. The story goes that after 15 years on the force, Walls was in a traumatizing shooting incident. While he was recovering, he met Ken Williams, developer and co-founder of Sierra, and they discussed creating a video game about being a cop, and an emphasis on procedure and making it as realistic as possible. And boy is it! This game comes across as a male cop's power fantasy, which is great for Jim Walls, not so great for me. For your average person, it's more like an intense fever dream you can't escape. The format and story are very similar to a random episode of Law & Order or Dragnet. In fact, the introduction to the game takes inspiration from that show's music. The plot. You play as Sonny Bonds, an officer who works for the Lighton Police Department. And a character you're not gonna get a lot of personality from, as this game is not really dependent on characters or personality, it's more reliant on how well you, the player, can follow police procedure. And, you know, also life essentials, like showering. Oh boy, a sneak peek into the men's locker room! Finally, I'll find out what guys talk about while showering! Say, Sonny, do you know how to tell the difference between an oral and rectal thermometer? By... the taste. Ah, toilet humor. What a shitty joke. <laughs> no, seriously, that was legitimately disgusting. Also, don't shower with your clothes on or accidentally leave the water running. You'll get points docked. And don't do that in real life either. It's a waste of water and nobody likes soggy jeans. Ever go swimming in a pair of jeans? It's not great. After you change your clothes and grab all of your stuff from your locker, you're sent out on traffic duty. Your superior, Sergeant Dooley, tells you there's been a cocaine issue with the local teenagers, and also to keep an eye out for a stolen black Cadillac. But first, let's check the local paper. Ah, huh, it's National Coddler Day. The president skips an important event to watch some birds mate. Coddler Day, huh? Hmm, yeah, the president would need that. Time to do some driving. Just gotta inspect my car, make sure there's no funny business, then we're off to do some patrolling. I was actually not expecting to get a map in which I have to use to drive manually to get to my locations. It was a little tricky at first, and I died many times before perfecting it. Basically, exploding. This wouldn't be a very long game, but the driving sequences tack on a lot of extra, unnecessary time. That's because you have to drive around and wait for someone to contact you on your radio about a potential crime. You can't really push it along yourself, you just have to wait. After a while has passed, we're told to go investigate a car crash. Following exact police procedure, you find that the victim was shot in the head and was a drug dealer named Lonnie West. Good job! That calls for a coffee break! Remember how I said the characters don't have a lot of personality? Well, let's just say this isn't the most exciting get-together I've ever had. This doesn't sound like an actual conversation I would have with a friend or a co-worker. It sounds like me trying to have small talk with my cab driver. So, nice weather we're having. Yeah, this coffee is good. So how's about that National Coddler Day? Time to get back on the road. Our next objective is to pull someone over who ran a red light. Alright, following exact protocol, let's go over and... Oh my! So, this is Helen Hotz. Yes, her name is Helen Hotz. And man, is she just itching to get out of this ticket using her feminine wiles and unbuttoned blouse. And Sunny is getting hot and bothered and wait, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> How did we get here? Woo, do you feel that tonal whiplash? This is absurd. We've gone from being scolded for not turning off the shower to Sonny Bonds basically blowing his load over a sexy lady. This tonal change is insane. It's like we've stepped into a Leisure Suit Larry game. Wait, have we? 
So, some explanation. When I played this game, I noticed how jarring it is in terms of the writing. I did a little looking around, and though this isn't mentioned in the credits for Police Quest, I did find an interview with Al Lowe, who is credited as a programmer on this game, but he said he also rewrote a lot of the story. The original design just wasn't flying with the people at Sierra, so Lowe was asked to fix it so it wasn't so procedural. This would explain the weird jokes, the hot women, the goofy moments that just come out of nowhere. Most notably is the scene where your coworker, Jack, meets you at a bar. Now, you're there because you and some of your coworkers for the precinct are throwing Jack a surprise party, but you get there early and have some bonding time with him before it starts. Bonding time! Get it? Do you get it? Because our name is Sunny Bonds! Bonding time! Jack is drunk and sobbing at you, lamenting that his marriage is on the rocks and that his daughter, Kathy, has gotten involved with some bad people and has developed a drug problem. He is just beside himself and here we are, trying to be a good friend, when a stripper that was hired for Jack's birthday party barges in and starts shaking her grass skirt around to some jaunty music. <laughs> Then they make out, and there's hearts, and what the hell is going on? There's that tonal whiplash again. Ah, oh, God, it smarts. There's another instance where you walk into one of your superior's office and you find a flailing, molting chicken. Someone put him there as a prank, and I guess this is actually based on something from Jim Walls' time as a cop, but it's just kind of there. You don't do anything with it, you just see a chicken. And I realize it's supposed to add some comic relief to an otherwise very clinical game, but it doesn't really fit. There's also a recurring character named Sweet Cheeks Marie. She's a sex worker that plays a pivotal role in a sting operation later on, who is just all over our character. There's these odd sentimental scenes of her all lovey-dovey with him, and it's so weird! It just feels like the designer's personal daydream about being a hero to this woman in distress. But I will say this, a lot of games at this time did not portray prostitutes nicely or respectfully, but in this game, Sweet Cheeks is so nice and friendly. It's actually more respectful than I expected. Too bad they decided to give her the tragically corny name of Sweet Cheeks Marie. I also found out that Mark Crow, who worked on the game's graphics, was working on Leisure Suit Larry 1 at the same time, which explains why they share very similar screens and backgrounds. The dialogue also shifts back and forth. Something I liked doing as Sunny is talking directly to other characters using the command prompt. It's pretty fun and it's not too hard as long as you follow the manual that comes with the game. The back and forth is actually pretty good here, but then you have things like this. I'm so happy, I could just shit. Quality dialogue. Later in the game, after you apprehend a couple drug dealers, you exclaim to your partner, Yeah, sure, Laura, you probably just grabbed the first white male you could find. What? What? What is wrong with this game? After finding the stolen Cadillac and getting a few excellent leads about a drug lord named the Death Angel, Sunny is promoted to the narcotics department and gets a new partner, a detective named Laura. By the way, the Death Angel is by far the weakest cover name I've ever heard. I could come up with much better criminal names, like Pushing Up Roses, for example, Mary Jane's Last Dance, The Squirrel, or like the paper pusher. Anyway, after further investigation and handling a few more criminals, Sunny is persuaded to go through with a sting operation in an attempt to capture the Death Angel. Joining you is Sweet Cheeks Marie. Why is she going, you ask? Well, you need a disguise, so they dress you up as... a pimp. Your partner also gives you some bleach and tells you to put it in in the shower. After two minutes, you wash it off and your jet black hair is now canary yellow. Yep, not how bleach works. The end of the game has you working with Sweet Cheeks at a hotel where you will eventually confront your criminal. I hope you like cards because the end of this game has you playing a ton of poker with the Death Angel. The folks at Sierra sure did like gambling, didn't they? You know, I thought this game was interesting. I did have fun with it, I can't really deny that. The procedures weren't as hard as I thought they would be, in fact they can be quite enjoyable, though they get extremely redundant. This game should be titled Open Door, Get in Car, Close Door, because I think I did that more than anything else. The game is actually so absurd that I found it amusing, but at the same time my brain keeps saying, Jesus Christ, what the hell is wrong with this game? And really, I think it all boils down to Al Lowe's contributions and the fact that it feels like the game was written by two polar opposite people. 
but it is an interesting idea and it has its charm, much like many of the old Sierra Quest games from the 80s. A VGA version also exists, making the driving a lot easier, but also taking away some of the charm of typing in your procedures and dialogue commands. Your commands do have to be pretty perfectly typed though. Screwing any of these things up will lead to your demise or an unsavory outcome. Though, if I'm honest, half the fun of this game is screwing up and seeing all the different ways Sunny can meet his end. I don't even know what my final thoughts are for this game, honestly. It was such an odd experience, but I didn't hate it. It's better than a stick in the eye, but not better than some of the more beloved Sierra games. Though as I understand, the second game got a lot better. Sometimes the first game of a series can flounder a bit as the designers try to find their groove, so that is something to consider. But you know, I had a fun time. As this guy would say, I'm so happy I could just shit. Yeah, I think that's a good way to end this video. Cheers! Hey everyone, thank you for watching my video on Police Quest 1. If you want to see more quest type videos, I put some on the screen for you. And if you want to support me, check out the description. I know you guys don't read them. Read the descriptions. Read them! This isn't a request, this is a command. Ahem. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.